Welcome or welcome back to the official Thompson Resume Writing Company YouTube channel where I share weekly tips and hints on how to update, refresh, and or prepare your resume and LinkedIn profile for your job search along with some career advice, some job search tips, and some personal stories of my own. I am Tamika Thompson. I'm the owner and resume writer at Thompson Resume Writing Company and I specialize in transforming bland, lackluster resumes and LinkedIn profiles into powerful selling tools that help corporate mid-level, manage management and executive professionals land interviews two times faster in their job search and ultimately help them earn more money over the course of their careers. If you are new to my channel, welcome and I'm so happy that you're here. I hope that you go ahead and hit that subscribe button below to join my growing YouTube community and if you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for staying in tune with my uploads and watching my video content. Today's video is going to be discussing a topic that I hate to talk about but unfortunately people are experiencing saying it all over the world and not just for the season per se but because we're coming off of the heels of a pandemic which wrecked havoc on the economy and that is layoffs so we're going to be discussing what they are why companies do them and more let's get right into it now the inspiration for this video came because I saw in the news that there were several companies who announced that they were laying off a, a percentage of their staff so Twitter Peloton, Zillow, and DocuSign, just to name a few. And with all of those companies announcing layoffs, especially now, I figure it was the perfect time to go ahead and dive into this topic to educate you as a viewer if you're not familiar with layoffs, if you've never heard of them, if you've never experienced them, to really let you know what they are, what to expect, why they happen, and things of that sort. But before I dive straight into it, I just want to say that being laid off sucks. And if you have been laid off, if you're watching this video I am so sorry I know firsthand how devastating it is to get laid off and to lose your job due to something that is completely out of your control something that you know that you have no power over so maybe you were a stellar employee or you were a high performing employee you always met your numbers you always met your metrics you gave 110 percent to your job to be let go like that is devastating I have been laid off in the past, unfortunately, and while it's not as bad as getting fired, it's still unfortunate because you are instantly, you know, without a job. If you have never been laid off before, you are not missing anything, it is not fun, but if you believe that you may be getting laid off soon or if you genuinely just want to know what a layoff is in case you happen to encounter it in your career, then this video is for you. So without further ado, let's go ahead and talk all about layoffs first what the heck is a layoff so simply put a layoff is either the temporary suspension or the permanent elimination or termination of employment for an employee now it is different from getting fired when you are fired it tends to be because maybe you weren't performing well maybe you missed your mark and you may, were put on like a performance improvement plan and you didn't hit the goal that you were supposed to hit maybe you violated a policy etc layoffs are completely out of your control and and it doesn't necessarily mean that you did anything wrong. Another difference between getting laid off and getting fired is that typically when you are laid off, there is some sort of a severance package that you are given. When you're fired, it just means that you are eligible for unemployment if your state provides it. But if you are laid off, you tend to be connected to resources. Um, they may allow you to apply for other positions within the company so you are still able to be employed with the company if you wanted to go to a different department or a different state or whatever the case may be. And also with getting laid off, there may be an extension of your benefits. So when you are fired, your benefits tend to end either that day or at the end of that month. But if you are laid off, let's say you may have health care or the company will pay for your health care for an additional three months or until you find something new. They may also help with relocation assistance and they may also assist you by providing you with resume tips or teaming you up with like a career coach or something like that. So getting laid off, you do still sometimes in some cases get connected to resources that can help you either get back into the company, maybe in a different role or transition elsewhere with your career. Getting fired tends to mean that those are reasons that were in your control. They do not come with resources. They are immediate. And nine times out of 10, you may not be eligible to get any type of other position within the company like ever, ever again. 
The next thing I am going to talk about is why companies do lay employees off, but I have to first just say, if you were laid off, I, again, I understand how devastating it is, but know that it is not your fault and there was nothing that you could do. And it's okay to feel your feelings. So if you were laid off, if you want to cry, cry. If you want to scream, scream. If you want to just go somewhere and get your aggression out, maybe go to a rage room or you want to go play basketball or something, something to get all that energy out. I totally understand because it is devastating and people take getting laid off in different ways to feel your emotions in that moment. It's totally okay. So I just have to say that because some people will be like, oh, were you, you know, you were laid off. You weren't fired. It's not that big of a deal. It is a big deal. Like, you just lost your job. That is a huge big deal, especially if you were with a company for an extended period of time or maybe that was the only job you've had. It's totally OK to feel sad about it, to be to even be angry about it and to just feel really frustrated and mad even. Because no doubt, if there was anything that you could have done to keep your job or avoid being laid off, you absolutely would have done it. So, moving on. <laughs> the next question that I want to answer is why do companies lay people off? There are a couple of reasons why companies may choose to downsize or may choose to cut or slash a percentage of their work first. Number one being shifts in the organization or organizational shifts. So this is kind of a buzzword. So when the company starts to restructure or if they're going in a different direction, sometimes they will shut down departments, they will eliminate certain positions, or they're looking to, what's it called, like whittle down their workforce as a whole. So maybe they have 1,000 employees and they realize that with this new direction that they're taking with a new strategy or a new approach they only need 800 so 200 people do have to go so that's one reason is that they're shifting priorities shifting directions as a company as a whole the second reason is cutting costs so of course if they're going from 1,000 employees to 800 employees they're shaving 200 people and if each of those 200 people make fifty thousand dollars hundred and ten thousand dollars whatever they're shaving or saving potentially millions of dollars by getting rid of people to save money. And when companies think about in all the different ways that they can save money without sacrificing quality or, you know, delivery or something to their customers, unfortunately, it does blow back or fall back onto the employees. And by cutting people, they may kind of shift that work burden onto other people or they may invest in some sort of technology or some sort of a system that can perform the job that's going to help them save that money. It sucks, but it's true. A third reason is due to economic factors. So there's been a lot of talks in the news financially, all the different financial institutions, websites, finance, money blogs, all of that, talking about that America may be headed towards a recession. Not 100% sure on that, about that because I am not an economist, <laughs> but I do know that sometimes when you start to see signs of a recession, layoffs may be a reason for that. So you have high inflation, of course, which means that the price of goods, services, products that the company may be using are going up, 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 and they're paying a really high rate for either one thing or multiple things, and that is causing them to want to save money elsewhere if they can't skimp on materials and if they're paying more money to receive or acquire materials or goods or whatever. So that goes back to cutting costs. So if the economy is not doing well, maybe shoppers aren't shopping at the store or buying the product or downloading the service or whatever it is, the technology, you know, so on and so forth. And of course, the next logical thing to do is going to be to cut people from the staff. And then last but not least, but if the company is not performing well, so if revenue is not the best, if sales are not that good, if all of the arrows on all of the reports are pointing downwards and not upwards, that is a sign that layoffs may be coming down the pipeline soon. Sometimes we'll see layoffs happen after a company has acquired a company or after a company has been acquired. Maybe they realize they have too many employees after the acquisition or after the merger and now they realize that they need to cut uh, or trim some of the staff so that's another circumstance where layoffs may occur. Another question you may have is when do layoffs happen? 
Technically, layoffs can happen anytime, but these may be some signs where you may start to hear some layoff rumors buzzing around your organization or just in general. So number one, again, if sales and performance numbers overall have been poor. If you are attending town hall meetings or you're attending meetings with your boss or um, just any type of meeting where they're discussing that the company is not doing well and you've noticed that you've been hearing that information in multiple meetings like several meetings over the past six months or a year then that may be a sign that layoffs may be coming down the pipeline soon now this doesn't mean that if the company has like one bad quarter unless it's a really really bad quarter <laughs> that they're going to start cutting people typically it takes some time so maybe like a couple of quarters three quarters or more when they start to see that things aren't really turning around and things are not going back up then layoffs may happen Another time is that around this time of year actually is when you can start to expect, expect layoffs. So around the final quarter of the year right before holidays, layoffs do happen. And that's because if the organization is trying to go in a different direction the next year and they're starting to cut costs and they're starting to downsize, this is the time of year that they tend to do that. Another time that you may experience a layoff is if the company does not hit a major goal or a major projection. Now this did happen to me in the past, unfortunately. There was nothing I can do. And marketing, I hate to say it, but sometimes when companies are looking to save money, we tend to be <laughs> at the top of the list. So there was some sort of a goal that was supposed to be hit in terms of sales and we didn't hit it. And so the marketing department was kind of, or members of the marketing department were kind of like the first group of people to get the boot because of course you can't get rid of sales because sales has to sell the product and marketing sometimes you know we're known for spending money spending money more than making money not always the case but I was on the receiving end of that so if there was a big lofty goal or any type of major goal that has been notable or fiercely communicated over the course of the year that the business did not hit you may start to hear some layoff rumors there too Last, you may start to see a layoff at the beginning of the year. So just because you made it through the end of the year and made it to the next year doesn't necessarily mean that you're safe. If you have been hearing news about the company, you know, talking about making a shift or going in a different direction or trying something new, you're not out of the hot seat just yet. Layoffs can absolutely happen at the beginning of the year. Another question you may have is, is there any way to know if you will be getting laid off? Now, this is a tricky question. Sometimes if you work for a large organization, you may start to hear information or rumors in the media, maybe. If you work for a smaller company, you may hear something, you know, kind of like by the, uh, what's it called, by the water cooler, you know, office gossip, people may start to talk something like that but ultimately there is no true way to know if you are going to get laid off your best bet is if you can make sure that you keep a close relationship with your manager because if a layoff is coming your direct uh, your manager your the person who you report to is probably going to be the person who is going to have the heads up before you do sometimes not all the time they are advised not to tell anything or leak anything in advance because no one is so, no one is supposed to know and yada 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 but if you have a close relationship with your manager they may give you some sort of a heads up or some sort of a sign or a signal it's anything <laughs> that a layoff may be coming so there's not always a way to know if you are going to get laid off for me when I did get laid off, I didn't not see it coming. Like I kind of had a gut feeling. So that's something to pay attention to as well. Like if you feel like, if you have a feeling in your gut that you may be getting laid off or something is telling you that something is just not up, something is off, people are in a lot of meetings, certain people are unavailable, you know, feel that feeling in your gut, listen to your intuition and just pay attention. Like, again, if, if a lot of people are no longer available or a lot of people are in meetings all the time, if you start to see certain people leave one by one, and I think I talked about that in another video that I posted to my channel, signs that you may, that you may be getting laid off or fired, that's a 
sign. Um, if people are starting to resign or people are just starting to like quietly disappear or leave without saying too much of anything, that is absolutely a sign. So there's no way to really know, but your best bet is to have a close relationship with your manager, pay attention to your gut and your intuition and signs, and make sure that you're observant of any changes that may be going on either in the office or just in the organization as a whole. And the last question that you may have is what should you do after you get laid off or fired? Um, simply put, update your resume and hit the job search streets, <laughs> right? So I posted a video to my channel that gave some excellent tips on how to write a high paying resume if you are a high earner and you want to make sure that you're not taking a step down in salary or if you are looking to say, hey, I'm out of this job and I wanna make more money, you can absolutely take some information from that video. Um, I also have loads and loads of content on my channel on just resume tips, how to organize your resume, how to write a qualification summary and everything, but your best bet is to update your resume if you are not the strongest writer if resume writing is not your strength um, your best bet is to reach out to a professional resume writer such as myself or you can scour LinkedIn or potentially Instagram to find a resume writer and then after you that after you do that you want to make sure that you create a job search strategy that you know the companies that you're looking for that you know the salary that you want and so on and so forth but Take a week or two to get your feelings together, to get your emotions together before you officially hop back, in, hop back into the job market because I know how devastating that can be and how sad it can be. And you don't want to have your first round of interviews where you're sad and bitter or still upset or still mad or still frustrated. And with your severance package, you may have like two or three paychecks you know, to spare before you officially have to take something. Money-wise, you may be okay. If that's the case, I advise you to take some time, sort your feelings out before you immediately jump back into it. But without a doubt, the one thing you should do is if your resume is not updated, if it's not current, to get that updated, get it current, and create a solid tactical job search strategy. So that is all you need to know about layoffs. Again, if you are watching this video and you have been laid off, I am so sorry. I'm so sorry that that happened to you. But I can promise you that it will be okay. Update, update your resume, start applying to jobs, and get ready for your next opportunity because something better is headed your way. If you had additional questions about layoffs that I did not answer in this video, feel free to go ahead and drop them in the comments. Or if you found it helpful, go ahead and let me know that you found it helpful in the comments. Or you can go ahead and hit the like button down below. And again, if you are not subscribed to the channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button below as well. If you need assistance with your resume, if you've recently been been laid off or you think you might be laid off or if you just need an updated resume feel free to email me directly at hello at thompsonresumes.com you can also visit my website at www.thompsonresumes.com for more job search tips resume tips career tips etc feel free to subscribe to my email newsletter list the link is in the description box below you can also follow me on instagram at underscore mika thompson and you can connect with me on linkedin my linkedin profile our name is Tamika Thompson. Thanks again for watching, especially if you made it to the end of this video, and I will see you all next week with another helpful video. Bye, you guys.